Hello everyone, welcome to another video on this channel. In today's video, we're going to see the blink of the book The Future is Faster Than You Think uh, of Peter H. Diamandis and Stephen Kotler. Uh, subtitle How Convergent Technologies Are Transforming Business, Industries, and Our Lives. Let's see the first page. What is it about? The Future is Faster Than You Think, written in 2020, examines how converging exponential technologies, AI, robotics, 3D printing, CRISP, blockchain, are reinventing every industry this decade. Starting with flying cars and artificial intelligence, it explores and predicts the future of industries including retail, manufacturing, transporting, healthcare, education, finance, and insurance. It also offers a vision for how these technologies can be applied to address many of the world's most press pressing problems. Who is it for? Futuri is hungry for big picture technology visions. Anyone interested in AI in the real world? Innovation geeks. The blinks, there is seven key ideas. We have the introduction, we have the first, it's when multiply technologies converge, they create exponential growth and innovation. Second, artificial intelligence is being combined with myriad technologies to supercharge innovation. Third, virtual reality technology is being used for more than just video games. Fourth, the future of shopping will continue to be shaped by technologies like AI, VR, and 3D printing. The future of education will be more individualized and make greater use of technology for self-teaching. Sixth, converging technologies aimed to make food more accessible, long-lasting, and efficient. And finally, the seventh, exponential technologies offer solutions on a global scale. And we have the final summary as usual. And what about the authors? Uh, Peter H. Damandis, MD, is a physician and entrepreneur. He has founded and confounded numerous organizations, including Singularity University, the Ed's Price Foundation, and Human Longevity Inc. A New York Times best selling author, Damandis's other books include Abundance and Bold both of which he wrote with Stephen Kotler, which is the second author. Stephen Kotler is the co-founder and executive director of the Flow Research Collective. His works have been nominated for two Pulitzer Prizes. Kotler's other best-selling books, which include The Rise of Superman and Stealing Fire, have been translated into over 40 languages, for, including in Col Collaboration with Simon and Screwed Inc. Well, looks interesting. Let's see what, what it's about. I hope you enjoyed. Peter H. Diamandis and Stephen Cutler. The future is faster than you think. Narrated by Brian Dozy. Flying cars, quantum computing, hyperloop transportation. These were all once considered futuristic pipe dreams. But now, they're becoming a reality, sooner than anyone expected. Things like 3D printing and virtual reality are available to a wide audience. Entrepreneurs and scientists are constantly exploring the possibilities of artificial intelligence and machine learning. And blockchain technology could give millions of people access to secure identity verification and otherwise inaccessible banking services. From shopping to education, healthcare to food availability, technologies are converging to accelerate the future and change everyday life. In these blinks, you'll take a deep dive into several of these technologies before zooming out and exploring what they mean for the bigger picture. Blink 1 of 7. When multiple technologies converge, they create exponential growth and innovation. The year 2018 marked the sixth time in a row that Los Angeles, California was voted the most gridlocked city in the world. It was also the year that Uber Elevate, the ride services aerial vehicles branch, hosted its second annual conference on flying cars. 
hundreds of CEOs, venture capitalists, and designers gathered at the Skirball Cultural Center in LA to present their ideas. By then, aerial cars already existed. This conference wanted to figure out how to scale production and adoption so that by 2023, both Dallas, Texas, and Los Angeles would have fully functional aerial ride-sharing capabilities. It was exciting stuff, but it did beg the question, why now? Humans didn't go straight from nothing to flying cars. There were a lot of steps in between. What makes today different from the 1920s or even the 1990s is how quickly new technologies have continued to advance. And when combined, they've sparked exponential innovations, groundbreaking developments that would have never been possible on their own. Take helicopters, for instance, which have existed since 1939 but have one fatal safety flaw. If the single engine or rotor stops working, the helicopter and everyone in it ceases to be airborne. As flying technology improved, materials got lighter and stronger, and the converging developments paved the way for a more recent invention, aerial drones. Drones rely on multiple smaller rotors and can carry more weight than helicopters. If one rotor dies, the others can keep the thing in the sky. But drones present another challenge. The task of constantly adjusting their many rotors at microsecond intervals is beyond the capabilities of any one human pilot. This requires yet another convergence of technologies. Enter artificial intelligence and machine learning. In these fields, recent advances have enabled huge amounts of data to be processed in real time. So instead of relying on a pilot's hand-eye coordination to fly the drone's distributed electric propulsion system, or DEP, other technology can step in to fill the gap. For example, GPS, advanced visual imaging and sensors, and microscopic accelerometers work in harmony to keep everything up and running, or rather, flying. And the result? An industry that used to be relegated to sci-fi films has started attracting some of the biggest names in the business. By 2019, 25 different flying car companies had collectively raised over a billion dollars in investments and were already test-flying prototypes. Blink 2 of 7. Artificial intelligence is being combined with myriad technologies to supercharge innovation. Flying cars aren't the first example of technologies converging to accelerate change in an industry, and they're far from being the last. For instance, artificial intelligence is set to become a fixed part of many aspects of everyday life, and not just in robotics and drone piloting. AI has experienced rapid growth in popularity in recent years. Just look at Microsoft's AI chatbot, Xiaowise. Unlike a lot of data-crunching AI applications, Xiaowise launched in China with a somewhat unconventional purpose. It was designed to establish a connection on an emotional level through friendliness, with a pinch of irony. Following her 2014 debut, Xiaowise became wildly popular. Since her inception, the bot has logged over 30 billion conversations with 100 million people. But the project itself was only a test for Microsoft. In 2015, Xiaowise became so well-known that she started doing live weather reports for a Chinese news station. In the years to follow, AI would become most useful in its ability to draw minor connections between disparate data points, links that it'd be hard for the naked eye to catch on its own. Few modern industries have made more widespread use of this than social media. Thanks to sites like Facebook and Twitter, massive data sets are constantly being collected. Whenever you like or share something, another piece of data is created. And even the popularity of cute cat videos has helped advance the software capabilities of AI image recognition. Combined with the influx of powerful, inexpensive graphics processing units, or GPUs, which can also be used to process and analyze data, artificial intelligence has become increasingly accessible over the past decade. And yet, just like with flying cars, none of the developments contributing to AI's prevalence happened overnight. Take image recognition technology. In 1995, artificial intelligence could read zip codes off of letters and packages for shipping. Nearly 15 years later, AI could distinguish between 43 kinds of road signs with an accuracy rate higher than humans. And today, AI algorithms can classify images, identify people in a crowd, and even lip-read. For language processing, companies like Narrative Science can use AI to write magazine articles without a human journalist. In fact, this blink was written by an AI bot. Just kidding, just kidding. It was written by a living, breathing, writing person. Blink 3 of 7. Virtual reality technology is being used for more than just video games. Imagine you're standing in a conference room. Looking around, you see the walls, the carpet, the lights. It is, perhaps disappointingly, completely normal. Then, suddenly, everything changes. Where the floor used to be, there's now a vast chasm. Instead of standing on a carpet, you're perched on a precarious wooden plank above a 30-foot drop. It's breathtaking, but terrifying. In 2001, a 60-year-old judge attending a conference in Washington, D.C. found himself in exactly this situation. 
he made a misstep and fell. Luckily, the chasm wasn't real. Neither was the plank. And though the fall seemed very realistic to him, he emerged uninjured. How? Well, just a few moments earlier, he had donned a set of virtual reality, or VR goggles, which were mapped to every detail of the room, but could change at the click of a button. This VR technology had wasted no time. In an instant, it had tricked the judge's brain into thinking his environment had transformed completely. Stanford psychologist Jeremy Balenson designed this virtual environment to demonstrate the power of VR in a courtroom setting. At the time of this conference in 2001, VR tech had come far enough that it was portable and believable, but it still wasn't nearly as accessible or as powerful as it is today. In the years since the judge tried out Balenson's VR goggles, relevant technologies have continued converging, and the VR universe has grown exponentially. Facebook acquired the VR business Oculus Rift in 2012 for $2 billion. And in 2015, 234 new companies entered the VR market. Soon, smartphone-based VR became accessible for as little as $5. And omni-binaural microphones now have the ability to create interactive immersive soundscapes. As scientists and entrepreneurs keep exploring the field of virtual reality, one thing has become clear. VR technology isn't just applicable to the entertainment industry. Aside from making video games and immersive experiences, VR can also teach empathy. At Stanford, Balenson and his team have spent two decades exploring VR's potential to help facilitate behavioral change. VR can, for instance, provide the user first-hand experiences of racism, sexism, or other types of discrimination. Think what effect it could have in the courtroom if the judge and jury could actually experience via virtual reality what it's like to be someone who's struggling with homelessness. Blink 4 of 7 the future of shopping will continue to be shaped by technologies like AI, VR, and 3D printing. When you think of shopping today, companies like Amazon and Walmart probably come to mind. But long ago, there was the Sears catalog. One of the original disruptors, this catalog was the future of shopping for over a century. Richard Warren Sears was working as a railroad station agent in 1886 when he recognized an opportunity to increase his income. The 23-year-old noticed that a jeweler had refused delivery of a crate of watches shipped from a Chicago wholesaler. Sears asked the manufacturer about selling the watches himself. The watches cost $12 to make, but they were usually sold for double that in stores. Then it dawned on Sears. He could sell the watches for less, say $14, but more quickly. He managed to make a profit of around 120 grand in current dollars. Then he started expanding from selling watches to sewing machines and, eventually, almost everything else. The Sears catalog grew to offer 500 pages of products. But despite its huge impact on shopping, the catalog's success didn't last forever. After 132 years in operation, the Sears company filed for bankruptcy in 2018. What had been its advantage for decades, its use of communications technology, automobiles, and the postal service, became its undoing as other businesses like Walmart and Amazon started beating Sears at its own game, offering cheaper products more efficiently. So what does the future of shopping look like today? For one, artificial intelligence is starting to play a greater role in creating a shopping experience that's both streamlined and affordable. AI customer service will help increase the likelihood of a purchase. And as advertising gets smarter, digital assistants like Amazon's Alexa or Apple's Siri will help customers find exactly what they need with less effort. Smart shelf technology can detect when an item has been removed from a shelf by using weight sensors and radio frequency identification, which reduces the need for staff in brick-and-mortar stores. And 3D printing can produce custom products from clothing to spare parts directly from your smartphone. Just for fun, here's a shopping scenario that might soon become a reality. You've got an important meeting tomorrow and need an outfit stat. Without time to peruse a shopping mall, you put on your VR headset. Using last week's body image scan for sizing, you discuss clothing options with your AI assistant. You pick your outfit, your clothing is 3D printed in a nearby warehouse, and an aerial drone then delivers it to your doorstep. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Blink 5 of 7. The future of education will be more individualized and make greater use of technology for self-teaching. Think back to your school days. How was your education structured? For many people, school involved going from one class to the next. Each time the bell rang, students would have to start learning whatever the textbook served up that day. For much of the past couple centuries, schools across the U.S. have relied largely on a one-size-fits-all approach. This comes from a time when high-quality schools and teachers were hard to come by. And the goal was, as the authors put it, to educate future obedient factory workers. But in recent decades, this dated model has become increasingly, well, outdated. To educate people in the future and for the future, 
we need an approach that takes into account everything that's changed since the Industrial Revolution. Plus, it's all the more urgent once you check the data on how school as we've known it is gradually becoming less relevant to the students themselves. Just take this 2015 study by the U.S. Department of Education, which found that 1.2 million students drop out of high school every year. That makes 7,000 dropouts a day, or one every 26 seconds. And their reason for leaving? Overwhelmingly, it's boredom. So, what's the solution? The answer may lie in self-directed learning tools. Consider an experiment conducted by MIT Media Lab founder Nicholas Negroponte. In 2012, Negroponte's team installed learning games, movies, and books onto Motorola Zoom tablets and brought them to children in two isolated villages in Ethiopia, without any instructions. Could the children teach themselves to read, write, and use the internet without any outside help? The experiment was a resounding success. Within four minutes of opening the boxes, the children had already found the power button. In less than a week, each child was using an average of 47 apps. A week after that, the children had learned to sing their ABCs. And less than half a year into the experiment, they'd already hacked the Android operating system. In 2019, the XPRIZE Foundation scaled up this concept by offering a $15 million global learning prize. 700 teams from around the world competed, and the two winners found that their software allowed children in Tanzania to learn the same amount in one hour as students enrolled in full-time schools did in an entire day. If more of the 263 million children without easy access to schools could use software like this, it could make a serious dent in global literacy efforts. Blink 6 of 7. Converging technologies aim to make food more accessible, long-lasting, and efficient. Do you know where the food in your kitchen comes from? Whenever you sit down for a meal, some or all of the ingredients on your plate have probably been sourced from miles away. Perhaps your potatoes have come in on a truck from Iowa. This week's bananas are from Costa Rica. And while it's possible to eat locally grown food, it's not accessible to everyone. The vast majority of food we eat has been transported from around the world. Often, food is grown in one place, processed somewhere else, and then sold even farther away. In the U.S., the average meal requires around 2,000 miles of travel. It's an imperfect system. It's also inefficient. Only 60% of food in the U.S. actually gets eaten. The other 40%? Straight to the landfill, after growing a crust of technicolor mold in the bottom drawer of your fridge, that is. Today, new technologies are being developed to help combat widespread hunger and reduce the ecological footprint of our food production. Consider the problem of food spoilage. Nothing lasts forever, but if fruits and vegetables could be designed to last a little longer, less food would be wasted. Appeal Sciences, a company based in Goleta, California, has spent the last decade figuring out how to achieve this. Fruits and vegetables already have their own way of staving off spoilage. The peel, or cutin, which seals in moisture with the help of fatty acids. Appeal Sciences has developed a way to create cutin in the lab. Made from plant-derived materials, this artificial cutin can be sprayed onto products. It's already been used on some avocados, making them take 60% longer to soften. Developing ways to make food more durable is an important step to feeding the world's future population. But there's still the problem of transport. In recent years, so-called vertical farms have presented a possible solution. Instead of growing and producing food elsewhere, these farms can cultivate crops in urban skyscrapers and warehouses. They operate indoors with hydroponic and aeroponic cultivation techniques and eliminate the need for pesticides. And while between 50 and 80% of labor in these farms is done by humans, robots and AI could take over most or all of the tasks in the near future. The more efficient, affordable, and automated food production becomes, the easier it will be to make high-quality food accessible for the millions of food-insecure people in the world. Blink 7 of 7. Exponential technologies offer solutions on a global scale. So far, you've seen what just a few recent advancements in technology now have the power to do. Virtual reality can change your perspective, let you visit otherwise inaccessible places, and even show you how you look in an outfit, without actually trying it on. Educational apps can provide students with the tools they need to commit self-directed education and learn what's most relevant to them. And food can be produced more locally to reduce environmental harm and increase overall food security. Other areas of society, including entertainment, healthcare, and finance, will also continue to be transformed as technologies converge in new iterations. But what does this mean for the bigger picture? for humanity as a whole. Take forest fires, an increasingly widespread symptom of climate change in several areas of the world. In recent years, wildfires have been tracked using satellite imaging. In 2018, NASA started to use AI neural networks to analyze the data. 
By 2019, their algorithms were able to detect wildfires with 98% accuracy. Global warming, with its rising sea levels and volatile temperature changes, will also test society's abilities to take on multiple global crises at once. A 2015 meta-analysis of climate change data by Climate Central found that 130 million people will be displaced, even if the world can limit temperature increase to 2 degrees Celsius. With an increase of 4 degrees, that number climbs to between 470 and 760 million displaced. Reducing waste, pollution, and inefficient processes will be vital in efforts to minimize the harmful effects of climate change. Many new technologies are converging to address this. As more people move to urban areas, we're going to need to make cities smarter and more resource efficient to support higher populations. According to a 2018 study by McKinsey, implementing smart city solutions could potentially reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 15%. That would mean, for example, using technology to monitor and manage different areas of urban operations efficiently. It could also decrease each resident's solid waste output by between 30 and 130 kilograms per year and water usage by up to 80 gallons per day. The future will come with its unique set of problems. In fact, many of them are already here. But so too are the tools and technologies to meet these challenges head on. You've just listened to Art Blinks 2, The Future is Faster Than You Think, by Peter H. D. Amandis and Stephen Cutler. The key message in these blinks is that technologies are developing faster than ever. As multiple technologies converge, new possibilities are unlocked that would have never been possible on their own. Some of these exponential advancements, such as those in the shopping and entertainment industries, will change aspects of daily life. Others, like artificial intelligence, can manage huge data sets and automate complex tasks. And vertical farms will be able to cultivate crops that take longer to spoil, offering the potential to tackle current and future global challenges like food insecurity and climate change. 